Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Today, I'm going to talk about my paper called Regulating Online Political Advertising. And in this paper, I will focus on the lack of regulation in online marketplaces for political ads where ad impressions are typically allocated through auctions that take place in the background. So in the United States, there is lots of regulation governing television and radio for political ads, but even though money spent on online political ads is much higher than radio and a bit higher than the amount spent on cable TV, there's a surprising amount of silence from the FCC and the regulators in this domain. So I will focus on fairness and equity in terms of pricing guided by existing regulation that governs television and radio. And first I will give a brief overview how regulation looks like um, for political advertising on traditional media. And then I will think carefully about how we can regulate online advertising in auction environments following similar principles. And I will show you some basic policy experiments uh, using data from Twitter. <clears throat> All right, so currently FCC does nothing to control online political advertising and ad impressions for politicians and any commercial advertiser are typically allocated through auctions that take place in the background in social media platforms or online platforms. So this kind of auction environment is good for the platform because it um, maximizes revenue extraction and is decentralized and is e easy to control, but it creates extra competition on political advertisers um, because they need to compete with other commercial advertisers that might be targeting their target demographic. So if one party wants to show their ads to younger demographics that are also heavily targeted by cosmetic companies or clothing companies, they need to pay more to beat them. And this kind of competition can affect both parties. Um, and this does not happen in traditional media, as we will see, or the limit, there's, there's a limit to which this could happen in traditional media. Um, in the US, um, there is a broad set of regulations governing political advertising on traditional media, and I will give a brief overview here. So firstly, there is a piece of regulation that once stations to ensure that if a candidate for a particular office has access to buying ads on their platform, all other candidates should also have access. And all stations are required to maintain and make available for public inspection a record of all political ad purchases and requests of political ad purchases, including prices paid and a date and a time of the ad. And finally, the piece of regulation that I will think more about is the lowest unit cost regulation, which ensures that the prices paid for political ads cannot be higher than the lowest price charged by the station for that time over a period of 60 days before the election. So this piece of regulation kind of ensures that politicians will have subsidized access to advertising time in traditional media because they don't have to beat other commercial advertisers to buy ads. They basically just pay the lowest price charged over the last 60 days, and they don't need to compete with other advertisers. This does not happen in online ad auctions. Like we mentioned, they have to compete with all kinds of other advertisers that might want to target the same users with them. So if we take this piece of regulation seriously, and if we take this goal of the regulator, the policymaker more seriously, um, and we, we think we want to help politicians get their message across and ensure they have affirmative right of access as defined in the law to advertising time in online platforms, how can we go about designing this kind of policy. So 
In this paper, I'm uh, taking a first stab at that uh, through a formal mathematical option theory model, um, which I will not go into the details of, but to give you a brief overview, in the auction, in the auction model that I have, um, I suppose there are different types of advertisers and different types of consumers, uh, including commercial advertisers and political advertisers. And each advertiser has a private valuation for each consumer type drawn from independent distributions. So different advertisers want the impressions of different kinds of customers and they value different customers at different levels. And in this kind of world, I will analyze the platform's revenue maximization problem under different regulatory constraints. So um, I will still take into account the revenue maximization goal of the platform while also thinking about a regulator who might have other societal objectives in mind. So let's first talk about what will not be possible or achieve its intended consequences in online platforms. So I will briefly talk about price caps. So if as a regulator, we come in and impose a hard price cap on online ad auctions, it will be impossible to get truthful bidding from political advertisers in this environment. So any political advertiser who knows that they will not be charged above a certain price cap will no longer have an incentive to bid truthfully. So we will be breaking the truthful bidding in the marketplace. And we can think more carefully about what kind of auction we need to achieve similar goals. So this is a formal mathematical way of trying to achieve the same goal. So let's think about an auction mechanism that solves an optimization problem where we put some weight on the revenue maximization goal of the platform and some weight on the expected quantity of ads going to political advertisers. So if as a regulator, I have this goal of providing easier access to politicians to help them get their message out there, this weight on the second term represents the relative weight of that goal compared to the revenue maximization goal of the platform. And in this kind of environment, uh, we can mathematically show that the optimal auction that solves this problem is a slight adjustment of the standard Meyerson auction that's used by online platforms today. So we basically collect bids from all advertisers and transform them mathematically through something called virtual valuations, which is like a simple mathematical transformation. And then we subsidize political advertisers by a factor of alpha over one minus alpha. And we pick the winner of each ad auction by looking at the highest virtual valuation. And we ask the winner to pay the second highest bid. So it's a very simple intervention to the standard Myerson auction. We just shift the virtual valuations of the target group we want to help by alpha over one minus alpha. And it has many advantages, we can easily characterize the change in expected impressions going to the target group of advertisers we're trying to help. If we have a goal of increasing the amount of ads going to our politicians by X percent, we can backwards engineer what the required alpha weight is in the optimization problem and the subsidy. And we can easily also characterize the percent reduction in expected prices if we know the distribution of bids. And this approach is also flexible enough to accommodate different weights on different kinds of advertisers. So we can have different levels of subsidies on different customer types impressions and different advertiser types. Um, so it is very flexible as well. Another simpler alternative is something called set-asides, which is like a practical policy tool that's used by governments all around the world. If they want to favor some group of bidders in their auction, um, they set aside a fraction of all the goods and only the target group that they want to help can take place in a separate auction that's set aside for the group specifically. So analogous to here, the platform can randomly allocate a proportion Q 
of impressions to commercial advertisers and one minus Q to political advertisers. And only political advertisers can take place in that one minus Q fraction of ad auctions. So in, this is also pretty easy to implement, albeit suboptimal as we will see. And it's also easy to characterize revenue loss in this policy intervention as well. And I will consider this among the set of policy interventions I analyze when I'm running simulated auctions. So I'll talk a bit about the data that I use to learn about bid distributions in real life. So I'm using data from the Twitter's political advertising database, um, which includes ads that were purchased on behalf of politicians from the two big parties in the US, uh, which received at least 1,000 impressions. And to give you a sense of scale, there were about 120 politicians or organizations that bought these ads between May 2018 and November 2019. And we have about 1,300 unique ads, and um, they ultimately amount to about 250 million ad impressions in total. And what do we observe in the Twitter data? We observe for every ad campaign the total number of impressions, as well as the breakdown of impressions by predicted demographic groups, uh, which include men, women, and 20, 30, 30, 40, 40, 50, and 50 plus age groups. So I will use this data set for my uh, empirical exercise where I estimate the bids of actual bidders. So I estimate the bid distributions, which I will then use in simulated auctions. Um, and I have to make certain assumptions to estimate these bid distributions. So I will define four distinct demographic groups, which correspond to these age groups. And I assume that the valuations of the advertisers are drawn from independent fresh air distributions. And I will model the observed price per impression in each political ad campaign as a weighted average of the PPI's prices per impression for the four age groups that you see above, with the weights being the share of impressions corresponding to each group. So what we don't observe in Twitter data, and we need to make some assumptions on, are as follows. So we don't observe the bids of commercial advertisers. We only observe prices paid by politicians. And the prices paid by politicians are equivalent to the second highest bid in those auctions. So by the properties of the distributions that we assume, the second highest bid or the maximum bid among all other commercial advertisers are also going to be distributed for shame. And I'm going to have to make some assumptions on the number of commercial advertisers that exists and participate in each ad auction. And I will vary this from 100 to 500. And in the full paper, I have results for different values of n. Um, and I also need to assume something about the fraction of ads won by politicians. And I will assume a range from 0.5 to 2%. And the full paper has results on different values. The benchmarks that I'm going to show you today are going to be with 1% and 250. So I can obtain estimates of bid distributions under different assumptions of n um, and use these estimated bid distributions to run simulated auctions. So I'm going to run 10,000 ad auctions for each demographic group. And I'm going to vary the alpha subsidy value between 0 and 0 0.001, representing different weights of the policymaker on the societal objective. And I'm going to draw bids from the distributions that I estimated. And each auction, I'm going to assume there are 250 commercial advertisers and two political advertisers. And I'm going to compare three policies. So the standard Meyerson auction, that is the status quo. I'm going to compare that against the optimal auction with the alpha study, that uh, alpha subsidy that I just described. And I'm going to compare this also against the 2% set aside growth in favor of political advertisers. So the subsidy approach that we propose based on the optimal auction performs particularly well in demographic groups where politicians are particularly at a disadvantage compared to commercial advertisers, those being the younger demographic groups. 
And a very small intervention with alpha lower than 0.0025 will cost the platform less than 1.5% of the Myerson option revenue on those demographic groups, while also meaningfully shifting the outcomes for politicians. Um, and a nice property of the proposed subsidy-based approach is if we have different kinds of political advertisers with different degrees of validation, so if one advertiser is richer than the other, the proposed subsidy-based approach is going to have an internal equalizing factor as well. So a uniform subsidy will help the underdog disadvantaged advertising more because the richer advertiser is more likely to win an auction on their own merit. So the subsidy will help the poorer or the more disadvantaged advertiser more. And you can read more about my results in the full paper. Uh, the main takeaways that I want to get across are as follows. So in an auction environment, we need to be careful about designing regulations governing political advertising. And we see that if the lawmaker's goal is giving politicians easier access and helping them get their message out there and form the electorate, there is going to be a simple optimal intervention. And we see that based on simulation data and um, the policy exercises that I showed you, this is going to be feasible with a very small revenue cost through a simple and easy to implement policy intervention. And we hope um, there's further research and we've sparked a fruitful debate on this topic that is of interest to everyone around the world living in democracies. Thank you.